three, two, one. So, have you all watched the fifth test flight yeah, of Starship? Time. Breathtaking, isn't it? Especially when the commander made the decision to let the booster go back to the launch tower in just a few seconds, and that a gigantic pair of mechanical clamps or chopsticks, as LMS called them, just caught the super heavy booster perfectly. Before we're overwhelmed by all of the cheers, I don't know if you had the same questions as I did. Why does Elon Musk want the booster to be caught by the chopsticks? How hard is it to realize this? And what does this flight mean for SpaceX, as well as to our future adventures to the deeper space? Today, I chatted with an aerospace expert who is currently participating in the International Astronautical Congress in Milan to tell us more. Yes, I and many other space enthusiasts have watched uh, the, uh, the test flight. It, it has been uh, a full success. No one believed that. Um, a, a success uh, with the first trial. And it has uh, huge implications for the entire space flight community. So the Falcon 9 rocket has already has the capability of landing its booster back on the launch pad. Why is Starship testing out this chopstick pick technique? You know, is it hard to make it happen? Indeed, uh, SpaceX has demonstrated the capability to, to, to land a booster with the help of uh, landing legs, right? The booster here is a whole different level. It's much larger than the one of uh, Falcon 9. So you have to think of it as if the functionality of landing has been outsourced into this megazilla <laughs> and these chopsticks. So the booster actually saves mass. It's like, imagine you, need, you want to brake a truck to, to reduce the speed of a truck by brakes. The brakes are inside the wheel, right? Imagine the brakes take a lot of mass and you could put the brakes outside the truck. You would save a lot of mass of the truck. And that's the idea here. So the, the special thing about the chopsticks is that they have got a damping mechanism. So you cannot land something like that in a rigid way. So you always have to have these dampers. Um, it costs a lot of money to develop them. They, as I said, take, uh, take again a large portion of the mass. All of this mass would be then missing for the payload. As such, by externalizing this functionality, SpaceX is able to increase the launch capacity of their Starship. Now that you are in Milan for the International Astronautical Congress, I wonder if you know the the test flight has become the center of topic, uh, the center of discussion for for space experts there. What do global space experts think of this test? It is not as dominant as I previously thought. So somehow we are used to amazing news from SpaceX and mind-blowing news from, from SpaceX. Right now, uh, the uh, space family is just happy to gather here uh, and to meet again. What do you think the test signifies for our future adventures into the deeper space? It's been monumental. Several few steps that have to be accomplished um, to achieve full reusability of Starship which is a launcher with the highest capacity that uh, we have had so far, right? And having this reusable is an absolute breakthrough. It will completely reshape the space ecosystem. Let's put it this way. One Starship will fully run. It will, other launch companies will have got a very hard time to compete on the one hand, but we will also see how many new uh, space companies will pop up with interesting ideas regarding space station, large space telescopes, and so on. So from now, 10 years into the future, 
the complete, uh, maybe even five years into the future, the complete space ecosystem and landscape is going to change. 